Hey fam, taking a break from editing to join in on the mid-year book freakout tag because I just realized it's, oh shit, I'm behind. All right, credit where credit's due. This is co-created by Earl Grey Books. And uh, number one, best book you've read so far in 2021. Uh, first of all, there have been a lot of great recommendations going on in this community, whether it's by those who upload or those who are joining in on the communities or both, why not both? I feel like I keep rating things at five stars, but clearly I'm enjoying the shit out of myself. So, however, that being said, uh, this was the year that I read my first Octavia E. Butler and it was Kindred. So yeah. Number two, the best sequel you've read so far in 2021. Most of these I have difficulty with because it's like, I'm, I'm horrible with favorites. So I kind of just want to give you a list and you can just go have some fun. Okay. I feel like house of secrets, was a solid uh, continuation of the story. Um, what, which way did it go, George? Which way did it go? That we join in on with House of Shadows. Um, those are my first Darcy Coates, and I think that it was a perfect selection that I made, um, considering how many there are to choose from at this point, because I am a slacker, apparently. But, like, it, was, it still had the great flow, no continuity errors, and it was a nice, you know, I don't want to say too much because <laughs> it is a sequel. Uh, I also finally read Uzumaki this year and I read the like individual mangas. So I really need to stop slacking on the ones that I've been meaning to read. I just need to fucking read them. Number three, the new release you haven't read yet, but want to. That's The Whispering Dead by Darcy Coates. And Number four, the most anticipated release for the second half of the year is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. No. Now with these two books, numbers three and four, I had a moment because at first for number three, I was going to say the Stephen Graham Jones. And then I was like, wait a minute, because that's the one I've been jealous of everyone for recently. Those who have their advanced copies and stuff, just like oh. that reminded me that the last time I felt that way was for the whispering dead. And I checked when the paperback for my heart is a chainsaw when that is released and that's like next year it's like a year from now and my heart like just like <sighs> and that's raining ow and it's raining it'll okay. and it's raining it broke my heart Okay. And then I was like wait 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 Amy you silly so the hardcover comes out on August 31st this year <laughs> Woo! oh my goodness had myself a moment and <laughs> Then, because of all that, it reminded me to check on the release date for The Whispering Dead. I was just like, I can't do anything about it right now. I'm jealous. What the fuck am I supposed to do about it? So I just forgot about it. So now I have it. It's coming up next once I finish The Unyielding. It's like I want to read it between books one and two of the Bloody Mary saga, but at the same time, like, I know I'm going to just lose everything else that's going on once I crack that book open. <laughs> At the same time, fuck it. But you know, for number four, I'm also looking forward to that reprinting of Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Even though she fucking broke my heart. I feel like I have complained about this so freaking much. So all I'm gonna say is number five, biggest disappointment was The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Why hast thou done this to me? Oh, because I chose to read it. Anyway, moving on. Number six, biggest surprise. I don't know. I can't remember anything that really surprised me this year. I don't know. That being said, compromise. Um, when I am, like I have been swept away by writers, like their flow. I keep seeing the reflection of the TV on the fucking thing. <laughs> it's tripping me out. Um, Oh yeah. So like there have been moments where like my jaws, my jaws dropped, you know, cause I've been like, Oh yeah. At the risk of spoiling anything for anyone with like, there was a Stephen King book that dropped this year where my jaw dropped 
And I was like, how did that happen? How did he even get me with that one? What the fuck was that horse shit? That book was a bit of both. Like I could predict things coming, but then he got me a couple of times and that was one of them. And then I was like, I read all that VC Andrews in high school and he still dropped my jaw. What? I call bullshit. Bullshit, Steve, bullshit. Except that doesn't count. That doesn't count. It doesn't count. Favorite new author debut or to you? Five. I've already named five, but the name that I thought of when I was first going over these questions was Mike Thorne. Newest fictional crush. Um, I feel like I don't, I don't know. This is a tough one. Cause I don't think that I think of crush in the same way that others do. For me, if I'm crushing on someone, it's because they're safe, right? Um, not because they're already in a relationship. I mean, depending on the relationship, the type of relationship, you do you as long as it's respectful and everybody's happy, you know what I mean? Because it's someone that I would never have any plan to cross any lines or like, you know, hey. <laughs> but if I were to have like a stereotypical crush on a fictional character because that's safe mode that's like the safest of modes right um i probably put way too much thought into this let's be real <laughs> but i'm gonna go with red from get a life chloe brown like he had his own baggage damage whatever um going on but like he could still see her you know he heard her her words had meaning he picked up on her nuances and shit and that's my idea of love or caring for someone when you care about someone their words actually have meaning for you you know it's not just some person you met at the bar or whatever it's someone that you have in your life that you choose to have in your life whether you're the type to love or whatever and so even though like he had his he has his own shit going on like he's still capable of caring for her for caring for others and like but also that husband and the house of shadows and secrets that he was he sounded quite beautiful too <laughs> i was totally digging on the wife in honey girl but then she just got obnoxious and i was like okay never mind uh, newest favorite character i don't know i don't know Book that made you cry. I don't want to talk about The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue anymore, okay? This is it. Until next time. <laughs> the book that made you happy. I'm going to go with Winnie by Katie Michelle Quinn. This is a bizarro story, so it's short and sweet and just, yeah. Drink the horn juice, all right? I highly recommend. Um, and... Favorite book to film adaptation you saw this year? I know that there's an actual movie like adaptation that I watched, but I can't remember what it was for the life of me. I've been dawdling over this list for like two weeks at least, right? And so I'm just gonna go with Behind Her Eyes um, and the Netflix series. It was pretty decent. Um, there's just one element to it that I don't, I don't know a better, I, I can't think of a better, I haven't tried to think of a better way to do that. Um, but my main gripe is how early it's introduced. Like get the fuck out of here with the like, hand shit to people, just hand it to them, fuck it. Favorite video you have done so far this year? Rolling dough. If I'm gonna creep myself out, I'm going to take you down with me. All right, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received, that would be Rolling in the Deep. Uh, Shauna McGuire writing Asmira Grant. This is a prequel to Into the Rolling, wait, Into the Rolling Deep? Into the Deep? It's really good, highly recommend it. Um, another shorty, but goody. And <laughs> there's, a scene that is forever lodged into my brain from this story and I mention it in the review. <laughs> like if you're an animal lover and stuff that scene is gonna 
I bet it's gonna get you. I bet it's gonna get you. It doesn't have to, but it will. <laughs> and I suppose this was a pretty cover as well. Whatever, we're moving on. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? The end of summer, by the end of summer. So that's gonna be a video in and of itself. I'm probably gonna do a separate video going over, excuse you, going over the additions that have been going on there. That's my plan for the rest of the summer. Plus two books on here. I'm reading Shelter for the Damned by Mike Thorne at some point. That's happening. I don't know when. I'm gonna grab that bitch and it's gonna be a time. <laughs> so we don't have Pride Deadpool, whatever. Duck Pride Deadpool. But we do have Barista Deadpool. <laughs> I've been waiting to open this for now. It's less than $9. It's part of the 30th anniversary stuff. <laughs> the fucking plug, he has a man bun. As per usual, it is a bobblehead. I'm pretty sure all of the Deadpool, at least the ones I have are <laughs> so special, are bobbleheads. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I fucking can't. I fucking can't. Oh my God, I fucking can't. What the fuck? Where are we gonna put him? Well, for right now, he's just gonna go right there. Excuse me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. His wife is a doula. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for putting up with my babble. <laughs> and yeah, until next time and beyond, you take care and I will try as well. <laughs>